What's going on everybody, it's Rev, and welcome back to another Dauntless video. In today's episode, we are so very close to wrapping up, honestly, I think the entire playthrough, which is very exciting. Uh, we have the Riftstalker Heroic Hunt, which we'll be doing today, as well as upgrading and equipping our armor at, at 500 power or more. Or I guess in this case, resistance. I've done a little bit of farming off cam, and so I actually have enough to do all of that right now. So that's what we're going to do. Get the upgrades going, and we will be sitting pretty with the with a very nice set of plus ten gear. We have the Valamir's Decree all the way up to plus ten as well, which is very very good. We'll be using this to take on Rift Stalker, and we'll also be using this to take on Shroud. I am going to adjust the build now that we have some better um, allocation. And I just want to get rid of all this molten, because that's... Let's see, we can actually use the plus three molten that we had. So we have six molten, six rage hunter. Um, our overpower is a little bit scuffed because we don't have two, two plus threes yet. Do we have any Aether Hunter? We do. So we'll have plus five Aether, Aether Hunter. We should be able to deal some serious, serious damage to this Rift Stalker. And our build is like, I'm very impressed with, actually. Uh, at least when it comes to Axe, Axe builds, it's pretty darn good. Um, I would go Wild Frenzy here, but we already have two, two um, instances of additional uh, attack speed. I might just throw in Blade Storm here. Just uh, you know what? I'm gonna leave this empty. You can you know you can fill that in with whatever you want. Um, I don't really have anything that's that great. But our uh, let's go over our perk summary. We have six conduit, which is whenever we use our Drask Eye Lightning Bolt ability. We're going to get some additional attack speed as well as give attack speed to other slayers if we're playing in a party. Molten is another attack speed perk that will give our party and ourselves um, some move speed and attack speed. We have Rage Hunter, Aether Hunter, and Overpower. These are three. Rage Hunter doesn't really do much for uh, Shroud and uh, Rift Stalker, but it does do a lot of work for the rest of the behemoths. We have five Aether Hunter, which will do a lot of work towards Shroud and um, Shroud, Reza Kiri. This build is going to be really good for Reza, but unfortunately we won't be using our Radiant Weapon, so that's gonna change. Anyway, that's our, you know, a very brief uh, perk summary of the things that actually matter. Let's hop in. I'm making a very deliberate point to bring Bulwark Tonics to this fight, and I'm also going to make a deliberate point to just confirm that, um, I have enough consumables for the future of this playthrough. <laughs> I'm going to have to re, uh, recraft up some of the uh, consumables, it seems. But I'm using uh, Frenzy Tonics, Bulwark Tonics, and Stamina Tonics, all of which are going to be at least a little bit useful. Frenzy Tonics a little bit, get a little bit less value in the Rift Starker fight. I think I've mentioned this in the past episodes, but... Because Rift Stalkers and Rage Phase is more of an attack and less of a uh, like a form that it takes that you can damage, it gets really, really hard uh, to make good use of Rage Hunter and Frenzy Tonics and such. But we did get a close spawn, which is very nice. I'm going to get the axe out because I'm going to hope I get this interrupt attack. It's going to be very difficult and it's not super easy with the axe. Yeah, threw the axe too, uh, too soon. Tried to get the timing, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. Taking a little walk to get my axe back. First order business is trying to get a KO. Getting pulled into the Shadow Realm, that's totally fine. We do not get the kind of easy interrupt that we get in the normal version, which is fine. Gonna just be waiting for the interrupt there it comes got him with the grim onslaught very useful tool for axe players 
Going for the KO now. It did not go the way that I thought. I'll take that trade. Right, now I want to stay healthy. And the reason for that is my Valamir um, unique effect is going to be dealing a lot of damage. It also deals additional splash damage, so it kind of explodes, which is nice. Roll that. I'm just going to stay on the move a little bit. I have my stamina tonic active, so I can honestly just run around. Right. Throwing my Grim. Get that big explosion damage. I'm just trying to utilize that as much as possible. Every time there's this pur purple sheen, and you can look at the uh, the new uh, little health bars at the top right, you can see the that Aether form is active, and that's when Aether Hunter is also active, so we're going to be getting that additional damage there as well. I'm just trying to lead the orbs into like particular areas and then <laughs> I kind of just like um like pump fake them you know just I go one side and then I and then I come back when I uh I need to make room for them or make room for myself so I don't get hit the first thing I do when it enrages is I'm looking for where the portal is if I hear it then I know you know audio cues are like a are, are a big portion of this fight But uh, the portal, I'm gonna pop another uh, set of tonics. But the uh, the audio cues are very important in this fight. You can know exactly what Ripstalker is doing in uh, in a particular moment. I'm gonna use Ripstalker here to kind of uh, block the orb so I don't get interrupted. But that also means I need to let Ripstalker do its attacks so I don't get hit. I tried to trade, but that did not work. From Onslaught, get rid of this Valamir proc. Gonna heal up because I want my axe to charge faster. Valamir unique effect. Very important. There it is again. Trying to get a break and it's already running. Nice. We're doing well. Gonna get some high ground. There it is already in the distance. Excuse me, I have the hiccups now. Um, yeah, uh, locating a behemoth is pretty simple on this map. Uh, it gives you a lot of vantage points, but I, I tend to just like use, uh, use a, uh, an aether vent and that'll get the job done for you. Yeah, that was a faint. I knew it was a faint, um, based on the amount of time it took for Rift Soccer to come out, but I just kind of rolled the dice on that grim onslaught and just hope that it's gonna be um in an area that i'm gonna be able to uh hit it i wish my axe was a little bit more charged for that but it's almost dead and this is the power of bulwark tonics honestly like i've taken a lot of hits but yep see like i don't have a bulwark tonic now <laughs> and uh it took a fat hit Now that my, the axe is ramped, we're uh, we're dealing good amounts of damage just by Grim Onslaughting. Now, if this is a fake, which it's not, it should die on the next... If I get the next interrupt, it should die. I'm just waiting for a... Uh, a chance. Yep, there you go. Didn't even need to interrupt. One well-placed axe to the forehead and um, it'll die. Nice. That is Darkness Shines, I believe is the quest name. Not too bad. Not too bad. Let's see. No, uh, no shards, which is the big piece that we need. But that's just okay. We've gotten very lucky in this playthrough. And so I'm, uh, I'm more than, uh, fine doing a little bit of risk stalker farming in the future. Now, Darkness Shines is complete. That is very exciting, and we have plenty of time. Ooh, gold offense score. Plenty of time to see what's next. 
All right. This could very well be the very last quest of the uh, the main storyline. Bright Shadows. Hunt Rezakiri, Hunt Shroud. All right. Cat has confirmed that Shroud and Rezakiri have returned to the Shattered Isles. They cannot be allowed to thrive. Exotic weapon schematic for completing that. Okay, well. We're already, like, geared up for Shroud. So let's talk about Shroud. Shroud and Rezakiri are threat level 17 behemoths. They are one step above uh, the heroic versions of behemoths. In this case, like Heroic Riftstalker, a very powerful heroic behemoth, is threat level 16. And Shroud is threat level 17. Shroud has um, the ability to create something called a Doomsday Orb which uh, you might have seen in Escalation. It's a big purple orb. And if you don't destroy it, it erupts in like a umbral nova and it covers a very, very large area of the entire arena that you're going to be fighting in. It does have a finite range, but um, for the most part, if you get hit by it, it, leaves, it sets your HP to one. And how you you just break it you it, it's like a it's a thing that it casts it's a thing that you can hit and you break it and uh it takes quite a bit of damage to break but the uh the mechanic is quite literally you know doomsday orb it sets everybody's hp to one and it is a very very easy man mechanic to to ignore in, in a bad way it, it's something that it throws out and you're just like oh i'm just gonna keep dpsing drown but we're going to break down this fight. I'm going to explain what I do. Shroud is one of the more like, it has the, a lot of attacks and, and, and variants to, to the attacks. And so um, I might not cover everything in the first uh, kill, but there's going to be a lot of information. So buckle up. Uh, another mechanic that Shroud has ha is when it's in Aether form, it has the ability to create clones of itself that can also be destroyed. The clone is probably more deadly than the Doomsday Orb. And so I highly prioritize, especially when playing in a group because people don't really like going for the clones. I highly prioritize the clones because with the correct loadout, such as like a, a you know, a Valamir weapon or and particularly an axe, you'll be able to, um, axe players are really, uh, e well equipped to deal with, um, clones quickly. And so, uh, Shroud is of the Shrike family. It has similar attacks to Shrike, but, um, obviously a different appearance and different attacks, but we'll see them. First attack, uh, it really depends on the range that you engage Shroud on. At range, it throws a bunch of goo. This uh, Umbral, uh, it flicks you with Umbral Blight. There is no armor to really reduce the damage of Umbral Blight, but when you are affected, hitting the Behemoth similar to Shock, it will get rid of it. At close range, it does its uh, wing attacks. We've seen these from Shrike, Moonreaver, Scrave. That was its version of swipes. At the end of its swipes, it does a random number of swipes. You can just roll that projectile. It jumps backwards, fires a projectile. This is that uh, its version of the of the swoop. Another swoop. You can hit these. Maybe if it does it again, I'll uh, probably more goo here. Nope. All right. This is the tr and the move that gives everybody trouble. What I do for that move, especially in parties. Stand entirely still, tilt my camera up, and then just roll backwards. The 360 does require a little bit of dodging. I'm just going to spend some time dodging the attacks so everybody can kind of see how I deal with everything. And this is honestly one of the best ways to learn how to dodge a behemoth properly is just going solo, don't attack it, and see how the behemoth he behaves as you move around. Here we go. The amount of hang time that Shroud has in the air is dependent. It's kind of random. Took a hit there, and that's fine. 
has a very deceptively long range, so I just tend to roll regardless. Can't break those with the projectile. Um, not too much point to that, but it's just kind of cool to, to show. All right. Well, that's a fair amount of its attacks. Let's uh, let's get into the fight. It's probably gonna aether charge here. Yeah. So, after aether form, you get an orb or get a clone. In this case, we got an orb. This is a doomsday orb. It starts gathering energy. I'm just gonna take the time to get some damage into it, and it's gone. Thank you, radiant weapon. Ground slam. It's all about learning the timings of the ground slam. We probably get a fly here. Yep. Roll backwards. And then that puts me in position to actually just bonk it on the head. Rolling backwards is the key for that attack. Tons of damage. Going in rage. Now, in rage phase, it shrouds you. Um, it muffles your sound, makes weird noises, and is pretty annoying because it obstructs your vision. The first order of business is locating Shroud and figuring out, you know, is it attacking? And, uh, you know, where is it? Where is the attacks in correlation to me? Where's the goo? It gets a little hectic. Now, the eyes glow, so there's a pretty fair chance of figuring out where it is. But, there's also an interrupt attack within that phase. It obviously didn't do it, so I'll have to show that off another time. Rolling that, catch my axe. Probably top off here. I forgot to bring, um, I forgot to refresh my consumables because I got excited. Just remember that Bulwark Tonics are going to be your best friend here in learning this fight. But if Shroud is ever giving you trouble, make sure you go in and practice. There's a beak. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the hitboxes of Shroud because they're quite garbage. Um, particularly the legs and the tail. Now, the axe actually has a little bit of a special um, ability where the vertical reach of the axe can sometimes hit the tail. I say as I literally miss all my swings. But the axe is very good and the sword is very good at cutting the tail. Now, the real... Oh, here we go. We got a clone. Now... Hello? Hello? Well, a clone was supposed to come out, but... What? I don't know what happened there. I've never seen a clone not come out. Um, what was I talking about? I'm totally thrown for a loop. Oh yeah, the hitboxes. The, uh, the hitboxes for the leg are really, really bad. And you're gonna see me here trying to hit it. And you'll see me just keep getting white damage. Now, your spacing is important on the hitboxes, as well as um, a really, really cheesy way to get it or to hit the hitbox is aim low, aim low for the feet on like the repeaters and bring a marksman chamber. There we go. Yeah, the hitbox is very low. And uh, so if you're hitting like the thigh region, you're not going to get it, but it, you got to go for them toes. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag them toes. All right, we got a clone and we're level three debt after that throw. There we go. A little bit of damage on the leg. It's actually almost dead. Nice. Axe is popping off. Very, very nice. Let's, um, I want to try and break something off of Shroud, but I don't know if it's going to, or like break one of the harder things, but I don't know if it's going to have enough HP to get, I'll try and get the tail. And if I can, I can, if not, ah, Shroud has a little bit of a different, um, run away. So you can see that the beam is clearly here, but it's also not here at all. And when you're going into this, you just kind of have to like approach a puddle and see if Shroud is going to pop out. It doesn't attack immediately after and you can kind of hear it. Yeah, 
and then it does a slap but uh, you can roll that slap the slap doesn't do too much damage i oh, i was just like wait that's a clone and then i like redirected so that was a little bit clutch i'm gonna try and get this tail we're just gonna throw all of our damage into and you can see how like i'm clearly hitting the tail but i'm not at the same time um onslaught's probably pretty useful here for breaking the tail i don't know we might it, we might get the interruptible attack and then that might uh give us a little bit more i'm used to playing the sword so the sword is like very simple at all right so it charges then it picks someone i'm gonna get rid of this so i'm not gonna be able to really get any damage that's unfortunate. Stamina is a little low. I'm going to actually roll through the legs here and try and get a onslaught to the tail, which worked quite successfully. Got about 5,000 damage on it. Heal up. Get on this rock to <laughs> try and get uh, a little bit more elevation so I can hit the tail hitbox. Dang, one hit with the uh, Valamir. Oh my gosh, it just keeps spinning. Come on, Shroud. Aww. Unlucky, couldn't get... Ooh, what is that? We either got the... Oh, we got the Hunger. Nice, another exotic. Easy exotics. Easy exotics. Now, when you fight Shroud, you have the chance to get... And we got Nightmare, nightmare Shards. Very nice. He double rolled. Mm, nice. We could upgrade the whole armor set if we wanted to. Or we could get um one of the shroud weapons, but I don't use the shroud weapons too much. The armor is where it's at. So that was shroud. We're going to um I don't feel like I covered everything that shroud has to offer. But uh hopefully watching me dodge was a little bit more um easy to grasp as a uh, as a first time experience if that was your first time uh, or no one of the first times fighting shroud um how do we want to do this for reza because we're going hot into reza fight i'm just gonna go weighted strikes here i'll go conduit conduit molten Rage Hunter overpower, weighted strikes, wild frenzy. Meh. We um we need to craft up some more potions. Some uh, more potions. Let's see. Mark Spower. Ooh. So um I'm actually gonna use these for the first time. And the reason for this is. Reza moves around a lot, very similar to Karabak, but it's a little bit more stationary, a little bit more telegraphed. But the the attacks that are it is telegraphing is significantly more um, hard to dodge, I guess. It's not necessarily the same. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bring frenzy tonics. We're going to bring bulwark tonics. I'm going to put bulwarks in the um, in the first slot because they don't have a duration. And using them last is a little bit more. Um, I'm wasting duration on my potions, on my other potions that do tick down if uh, if I pop it last. So um, what I'm going to do is pursue a radiant behemoth, Resicuri, and let's get it. I'm gonna kind of do the same thing that I did uh, with Shroud and just kind of let Reza do its thing, and y'all can watch how I uh, dodge. creates orbs that it fires in random directions um when it's not aether form it's not super deadly round slam that just has a particular timing that you'll need to learn you can roll through the side here or ruth roll through that attack this is something i called strafing a lot of attacks coming out in a uh, rapid fire manner so i apologize if i'm not able to uh explain them all Okay. 
you can roll that little strafe it's very um hard to do if you're actually attacking that attack looks very deceptive but it actually goes in like a um this goes like that <laughs> it makes like an x pattern uh so standing in the middle is a little bit safer when it's not in aether form so this just keep in mind like more if it's aether form which i'll point out once it is it is a lot scarier but in the early stages reza is not very um scary some uh karma breaker and tempest form up and i take the time to pop my potions now for this attack i tend to tilt my camera a little bit down towards the ground so i can see the maze kind of happen and once it goes aether form I'll, I'll demonstrate what i'm talking about here we go aether form so the lights on reza kind of well light up and now we're going to be getting more strafing more orb attacks and more everything it also has laser beams which i'm there we go i try to move in really close uh early on that attack and um just kind of roll through the laser beams aren't too hard to dodge so here you can see a, a lot more orbs and so like positioning yourself pretty far back and then tilting your camera down you'll be able to see where a majority of them are clustered up and there are some spots that are just not going to be advantageous for you now you can see through the course of this fight that reza has been moving around a lot so i'm gonna just stop that for a moment Now it does move around a lot, but it also has very little HP. We haven't hit it very much and it's already, you know, down to 75% um, Now typically if you don't get hit by that, it will uh, put a dome around you and I'll, I'm sure that we'll be able to uh, see that again in the in the future. But Reza does have these like a glass case, I call it a glass case of emotion. Um, <laughs> It puts you in like a glass uh a glass case or a prism and you have to break out of it but the orbs that reza fires can still pass through them and so it's uh kind of a dance limiting your space already at 50 percent got another ko coming up thank you aether strikers yeah blunt weapons are very very good against reza and we'll get a ko here too Pop of my lantern. I need my uh, tempest form. That was a lot of missed missed damage. Ah, it's already it's already wow. For uh, all right. So this is the glass case. And once Reza is at um twenty five percent HP, I call this um kind of like it's like last ditch effort, or I, I usually call it phase three, but because it has three different laser type attacks that was it we survived somehow some way thank you bulwark tonics so we'll take the time to heal up it just enraged again so we're in another case that's fine trying to break out i'm also getting my uh, buffs stocked up so you can uh get more damage in if you can navigate the, the maze i tend to not really risk it and just tilt my camera down and then I'll move forward as I think the um, orbs are just not going to be able to hit me. The strafing can get really annoying and stun lock you. It's, they don't deal a lot of damage. They're like slaps on the wrist, but they all add up, you know. Roll through the middle. Oh, never mind. I'm bad. You can't roll through the middle. That that laser beam attack is really not too we got four shards again on reza wait i don't know i think i'm the luckiest uh, i'm the luckiest that's it i'm just end of sentence i don't know i got four shards 
That's pretty funny. I got nothing but shards. All right, well. Easy game, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that this is the last quest. We're going to take, just as a heads up, we're going to take time with one more episode and go over trials because I feel like that's kind of like the next thing that you would want to be doing and or know about, and that's something that we haven't talked about. Exotic weapon schematic. All right, I got the Molten Edict. I already have the uh, the hunger and, you know, honestly, the exotic weapons and armor, save for the Tragic Echo and the Skull Forge, not really that wild, um, unfortunately. All right, well, what do we got? What do we got? I'm just seeing if anything else is available. I'm sure this is probably just craft an exotic weapon. Yep. Cool. All right. And uh, yeah, we have uh, we have cleanup on the lantern quest and the concussive grenade quest. King of the hill as well, if we wanted to do that. But we also have. Uh, luck be a lady, which I've turned in because I've um, drafted a video for this particular portion of the game. And so we have uh, trial run, which introduces trials. And this is what I will be doing in the next episode. But this is a much longer episode, but hopefully it helped in some way, shape or form. I'll be going over Shroud and Resikiri a little bit more. I know that they were... They have a lot of attacks and there's a lot to talk about and uh, they're more intricate behemoths than than the others and so um thank you guys so very much for watching if you like this video please leave a like if you want to support the channel you can use creator code revy red in the dauntless in-game store or the epic game store you can uh check me out on stream if you're interested i've been playing a lot of monster Hunter world um as well as dauntless and doing escalation with viewers um, I do a lot of stuff on my on my Twitch channel, so check that out if you are so interested. Thank you guys again so very much for watching, and I will see you on the Shattered Isles. <laughs>